everybody, this is Dream, and today we're going to do a NASCAR breakdown of the Cup Race at Richmond Raceway this weekend. Uh, before I get started, can you guys smash that like and subscribe button? Obviously, the drivers haven't qualified yet, so I will be kind of mentioning how I feel if they're rosterable based on how they qualify. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get into it here. We're going to start with Martin Truex Jr. for Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, Joe Gibbs does have a lot of upside on this race, as Toyotas have absolutely dominated here with nine wins in the last 15 races. And Martin Truex Jr. has three of those wins in the, in the top ten. Uh, he, he and Denny Hamlin should be the favorites. Uh, he's won three of the last ten races here, and he definitely uh, hasn't... Uh, has had a good, lot of success here. He finished 11th last year, or earlier this year at this track. He is pretty expensive, but he has uh, five top 10s in the last six races here, and he will probably qualify in the top 10 as well. And that shouldn't stop you from rostering, though, because of his upside. Uh, Denny Hamlin is also in play here for uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, as he has one win in the last 10 races. He also has four top 10s in the past six. Uh, the race earlier this year was not his best, but he uh, does have uh, good averages here with almost a 6.8 six fin finishing position. He is also the favorite to win here, so he has a lot of upside as a result. Uh, Kyle Busch has a little bit of risk here because he hasn't had a top 5 in the last 6 races, but he has had 5 top 10s there. Uh, and if he can qualify outside the top 10, he would definitely be a great option, though he is a little bit riskier if he goes inside that. But he does have 2 wins in the last 10 races, they just haven't been in the last 6 at this track. Uh, Christopher Bell is also in play for Joe Gibbs. Uh, he's finished fourth and started outside the top 20 earlier this year at this track, and that gives him a nice uh, fantasy point upside. If he can qualify outside the top 10 or 15, that will give him a nice boost. He also uh, has five top 10s in the past six races here at this track and four in the top five, so he has a lot of upside and is definitely a great option. Uh, Joe Gibbs' uh, sweep is definitely in play here. Uh, Kevin Harvick for Stuart Haas is also viable here, as he's had one win in the last 10 races. He has been in the top 10 in five of the last six races, and he has a win in that stretch. He's also got a top five earlier this year here, though his lower lowest finish is worse than those around him in this price range. Uh, he has been a little bit more inconsistent than some of the others at this track. Uh, Joey Logano for Penske is in play here. He's capable of being a sneaky fancy point option depending on where he starts. Though he is inconsistent, and he, he has had some top 10s here in the past. Uh, he is one of the best overall drivers at this track, though, as he's had really good uh, finishes most of the time. Uh, we'll have to wait and see where he starts, though, because he tends to start in the top 10 as well. Uh, uh, then we'll look at Ross Chastain for Trackhouse. Now, he does feel risky here. Uh, he's had a top 5 in the last race at this track the issue with him is he qualifies well here and then he sometimes doesn't finish well that said he has a lot of upside and if he qualifies outside the top 15 i think he becomes a really good play but he is high risk because he does tend to have issues uh tyler reddick is in play here for um 23xi and he's a little bit cheaper here uh now he is a riskier play as he's been qualifying better than he normally finishes but this track is a place where he can do well in he does feel risky if he starts inside the top 10 again, though. Uh, but uh, he does have some upside, and he does draw some good potential. It's kind of a contrarian play. Uh, Brad Keselowski is a Hail Mary contrarian. Uh, sorry, he's not uh, the one. He feels really good for this track, as he tends to not be a top 10 qualifier, but he runs pretty well here. He's had a top 10 earlier this season as well at this track, and he won a race here in the last 10 Um a top 15 finish here is doable, and he's not finished outside the top 20 in the last six races at this track, so I really like his, you know, safety aspect there. Uh, for Ty Gibbs, he's only run two tracks, two races here at this track, and he is a Hail Mary play, but he had a top 10 in, the, in one of the two races. The other was not very good, but he does have a car capable of a good finish, and I do like Joe Gibbs' cars today. He definitely draws some good potential, uh, but he's high risk, high reward. Uh, Alex Bowman is kind of a sneaky play today. He had a win in, top, in the last six races here, and he's also been in the top 20 in all six. Uh, he had four top 10s, uh, and he's uh, capable of a really good race here, though he hasn't been very good this season. As you can see, his last uh, top 10 was actually at Richmond earlier this year, so it's been a little while. That said, he has got a good car to do it here, though Hendrick has not been quite as good uh, at this track as some of the other teams. He's a little bit cheaper and has some good upside as a result of his history at this particular track. Uh, Daniel Suarez is in play. Now, he does feel pretty risky today, uh, but he is cheap and he does pay. He does help pay for others 
as he should start farther back in the pack. And if he does, he has four top 20 finishes in the past six. He's got he's got some risk, but he does have some value at this on this track as well. Uh, then we'll look at Eric Amarola. Uh, he is a good option if uh, Suarez was to uh, you know be up front more. He's somebody I would consider as he's had three top tens the past six of this track. He also tends to start around outside the top 20, uh, which gives him a lot of upside considering the he's been a top 20 finisher in five of the last six races. Um, he also has uh, started last race at 32nd place and finished 13th, which gives him some good potential here. Um, he That was a uh, 49 fantasy point day for him, which is definitely nice from a $7,300 driver. Uh, then we'll look at Chase Briscoe, also for Stuart Haas. He's riskier than Amarella, but he does draw some upside here as he's had some decent finishes. If he starts out outside the top 25, he'll be viable, but he's capped around a top 10 to 12 finish at this track so you do need to keep in mind that when you're deciding whether to use them and the finishing positions on these cheaper or starting positions on cheaper guys are really going to play here a lot because we do need them to start you know farther back then last but not least we're going to look at austin Dillon. he can be a very irritating driver for fantasy as he tends to start in the middle and finish in the middle that said he's had three top tens here in the past six races and if he does start in the top 10 i would definitely avoid him uh, but if he is outside the top 10 or 15 he'll become a very good play He's got some good upside, but just be aware that he can Austin Dillon it and end up really bad. Though he has managed to lead more laps than Kyle Busch at this track over the last six races, which was kind of a shocking stat, and his best finish here is fourth. So he's definitely capable of a really good finish. With that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, and have a nice day, guys.